Me and Alex here, we were really good this year, so we get to open up some Christmas presents from Santa early. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna unbox this DeWalt table saw. And this came as a package, and it comes with this stand, which is the DW7440RS. It's a multi-purpose stand that can work with any table saw, but we wanna make it work with this DeWalt table saw. And this DeWalt table saw is model DWE7485, and it has a 24 and a half inch rip capacity. We got it off Amazon for just under $400 during their Black Friday deals, which was a fantastic bargain. So let's take a look and see what was inside. Now I must say, I'm pretty excited about getting this out of the box. Um, a table saw is pretty much something everyone should have, and I actually don't. I've been so far making do with a circular saw and a whole bunch of various doodads to make it cut, but the precision of a table saw will be an awesome addition to the shop. So let's go ahead and let's start getting this out of the box. I think I'm gonna start with the stand because then we can use it to uh, put the saw on and take a closer look. Everything's out of the box and it does look like there's some assembly required. So just looking at the parts, we have some hardware. Um, this looks to be the axle for these wheels, which look like they're fresh out of the mold based on this white powder. It has the attachment clamps for the saw that we'll use later. And this looks to be the kickstand for when you stand it up and then lay it back down again. So I'm gonna go take a look at the directions and start putting this together and let's see how the easy this is to do. Step one, and I hope to God the instructions get more clear after this step. So the first thing we need to do is install this axle. And if you look at it on one side, it does say rear. Now it says to install this towards the rear of the stand. However, rear is really just a matter of perspective, isn't it? So what do they mean? In the instructions, it is very hard to tell. So this is how I figured it out and hopefully this will help someone else out and hopefully I'm right. This side over here has the handle. This is the top. So that makes this the bottom. Now in the instruction manual when they're installing it, it looks like it's laying this way with the legs facing up. So basically it's upside down. So in this case, this is gonna be where we install the axle and Based on the diagram, it looks like rear means it is facing me, so that I guess when this is all assembled, you will be working from that side of the stand. However, there's nothing labeled on it that says that clearly anywhere, so right now it's pretty much a guessing game, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. So let's see how this screws in. So to do that, we need two carriage bolts, and two washers, and two locking nuts. Again, this is not very clear because it comes with a bunch of different bolts, but the carriage bolts have little square design indentation underneath the heads, and there's also only two of them in the hardware pack. So let's go ahead and install the axle. So putting on the wheels is pretty easy. They just get slid onto the axle and secured with a washer and a lock nut. All right, now that I got the wheels on, I'm gonna point out a gotcha that just got me. There are actually two types of nuts and one is a locking type and one is not the locking type. The way you can tell the difference is the locking has a little rubber um, washer kind of embedded into it, which is the locking mechanism as you tighten it up. The other one does not. So, so far all four bolts that needed to go in should have all been locking and I accidentally used one regular one, um, not knowing that there were two different types in the hardware kit. So be careful of that when you're selling this, it kind of stinks to have to take things apart and then re-put them back together later on. 
The next completely confusing part of the instructions, which is to attach this kickstand, which it says, make sure you install in the up position so it's facing up. But since this is upside down right now, we need to make sure it's facing down. So to do that, I'm just gonna lift this up and then slide the kickstand through its holes. Now to secure this, and it's not mentioned very well in the instructions, you need these little plastic pieces. And these are gonna slide in and then they're gonna be secured in place using these screws. Now there's four of them and they fit the Allen key that's supplied in the hardware kit. Now these are the smaller of the sets of four screws. Now that the kickstand is bolted in place, it's time to go put the rubber bumpers on the other side. But before I do that, I wanna show you some little cool thing, but you know, not really necessary for anything. There is a little slot in the plastic um, piece here to slide this Allen key into so you don't lose it. Um, now, I'm not really sure why you would need it, unless they plan these kickstand bolts to come loose on a regular basis, but hey, it's there, so I'll point it out. Now, if only that much thought went into the actual instruction manual on how to assemble this. Now, these rubber bumpers um, just install right into the metal by using these little screws that come with it in the hardware kit. Now, these are the only two small screws, so it's not easy to mix these up at all. Now, these are actually a little tricky to install because you'll need a star shaped screwdriver and also something small enough to hold this little tiny lock nut on the other side. Alrighty, now that we got the stand all assembled, let's go ahead and stand this up and see how it looks and hope we got everything together correctly. Alright, so the kickstand looks good in the right direction holding it up. Um, Right here we have the handle to help push the stand. So that just comes up like that and there's a little release back here, let it go back down. Move it back, so let's see how it stands up. So we'll go ahead and move it over like this. We'll lock the stand down. There's these little release brackets back here to bring the legs up. Now we'll pick up the other side and do the same. So my first impressions of this uh, DW744RS stand is that it is pretty stable, but it feels a little short maybe. But we'll have to see how that feels once the saw is actually on the table. So while we're looking at this this way, I want to point out a couple of things. So the way that you, the audience, are looking at it is the front of the saw. and so you'd be working from this direction towards me. And what you see right here is a locator clip. And that's for when you put the brackets on, these things, you can help locate exactly where the saw will go and then lock it into place. This will keep the saw from sliding back and forth on the stand while transporting it or while physically using it to cut wood. So other than that, there really isn't too much else to this stand without the saw on it, except to maybe mention the fact that the rest of the hardware that does come with the kit is for mounting the physical saw to these brackets. And since I don't have the saw out of the box yet, we will be getting to that in a little bit. Let's move this aside and let's take a look at the actual table saw. All right, now for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's get this saw out of the box and see what it can do. So right out of the box, the 7485 is nothing too crazy, uh, it doesn't really look that scary and definitely doesn't look like it has as much assembly as the stand had. Um, there's the main unit right here that came out of the box and the only other two packaged accessories were the notorious miter gauge and the um, driving knife and um, pull down bar for the blade itself. The blade is actually already pre-installed underneath the throat plate, which was also pre-installed on this model. So I think the best thing to do to take a look at this would be to go ahead and install the stand mounting brackets on the bottom and then get this back up on the stand so I can stand up and tell you more about it. There really is no recommendation in the instructions on how exactly the best way to mount this saw to the brackets is. I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I'm gonna show you the way I did it. So the kit comes with these bolts and lock nuts and washers. So I'm gonna take a bolt, 
I'm gonna stack a lock washer on top and then a regular washer and I'm just gonna go and screw it through the stand. Inside these plastic pieces is a threaded hole so I'm just gonna go ahead and screw it into it. Fits the bolt perfectly and it seems correct to me. If I'm doing it wrong, please feel free to leave a comment and tell me that I did it wrong so I can update this. So right or wrong, putting the bolts to the stand in that place, um, it anchors it really solid. So hopefully it holds up and we did that correctly. So next up, I wanna start putting this together, but before I put it together, I wanna to talk a little bit about um, the storage for all the components. Now, there is storage on this um, since the contractor saw for almost every part, and that includes the miter gauge and that includes the blade guard, but that also includes the push stick, the fence, the power cord, the anti-kickback mechanism, as well as the wrenches for taking the blade in and out. The most frustrating thing was the two parts that didn't come in their storage compartments, the blade guard and the miter gauge, are really hard to figure out where they go and the instructions are almost worthless. See, look at these. Pretty sure that's worthless because when you see where these go, you'll see why that picture is meaningless. All right, let's start with the easier one to figure out and let's go ahead and put the blade guard away. The blade guard is actually fairly simple to put in place. You just make sure that this piece right here, which pulls out a little bit, is straight up and down. And this area right here is where the blade guard actually rests. So rest it on this, put this over the top of that piece, and then you just pull it out and turn it and it locks in place. Now for the miter gauge, it looks like in the diagram that it actually installs underneath where we put the blade guard, but it actually doesn't. It goes on the opposite side and on the inside and it slides into this little groove right here and then pushes all the way back. You're welcome for figuring that out for you. Now that we've got everything put away, we can take it all back apart and put it back together so we can actually use it to cut some wood. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove this throat plate and we do that by undoing this lock here and then using this finger hole to pull it out. The next step is to unlock the blade height adjustment and use the turning knob to raise the blade all the way up. Now, the saw arrived with the blade already installed as well as the non-cut through riving knife. Now, the non-cut through riving knife is for when you're not cutting all the way through a piece of wood, but that's not what we're gonna be using right now, so we're gonna remove this and put on the regular through-cut riving knife and the blade guard and the anti-kickback balls. So to do that, we need to remove this one first, so we'll do that by undoing this screw. Now, you only need to loosen it up about three turns, and then you follow the arrow and you push it in, and then pull off the blade to remove it. Once that's done, we can go ahead and get the blade guard and other riving knife. And we go ahead and install that in the reverse order. So first we'll slide this back in. We will go ahead and push that button until it slides into place. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it's locked. And then we will tighten the screw back up. Now we can go ahead and put back in the throw plate. and make sure we lock it into place. Now, when you have everything opened up to install the blade guard and the riving knife, it's also a good time to change the blade if you want to, and that's pretty easy just by removing the wrenches from the back of the machine and then using them to release the blade. Since this blade is already installed and this one's fine for what we're doing now, we're just gonna leave it in place, but it's a pretty simple procedure. All right, the next step in getting this set up is to install the anti-kickback balls. And these are kind of hidden over here behind the wrenches that you use to install or change the blades. Now, to get these out is really kind of tricky to figure out, but once you know what to do, it's not so bad. There's actually a push button right here, and what you do is you squeeze that in, and then they release off. Push down on the stem again, this little button right here and then you slide it into this groove in the back of the riving knife. Now this is spring loaded, so you're gonna have to push it down and make sure it clicks into place. Once it's in, you can check it by pulling up on it to make sure it doesn't come out, but 
once it's locked in, it should be good to go. Now the final step to setting up the saw is to remove the fence from its home position and then set it up on the table. And that's done by removing these two clips on both sides of the saw. And then disengaging the fence from the side of the machine. And you'll notice there's different mounting points on the outside of the saw and this is on both sides on the track that adjusts the fence. So to attach this, you just put the little bracket over the top of these protrusions and then you lock it down with these clips. And then it's solid and in place. Now, the reason there's a couple different options for locking this fence down is this first one is for cutting from zero all the way up to 20 inches. This table saw is capable of cutting all the way up to 24 and a half inches. And to do that, you set it to this second bracket over here. And now it's capable of cutting between four inches and 24 and a half inches. So it's just to make it a little bit more flexible. Now to make it even more flexible than that, there's actually even a way that you can mount the fence all the way on the opposite side of the saw for anything that you might need to use that kind of functionality. To adjust the fence on this table saw, you just release this bracket over here on the side, and then you can turn this knob and it moves along the rack and pinion system to adjust to the distance that you want. And there's actually a nice little ruler on this side that tells you exactly what the size of your cut's going to be. Now, another nice feature of this fence is that when you have it all the way out and you need to support larger pieces of material, the fence itself can be flipped over like this and now it provides support for larger materials. And it actually has two different um, settings. So this first setting is for support, but if you pick it up and engage it one step higher, it now becomes a narrow ripping fence. And one final thing I want to point out is that the push stick is actually built in right here on the side of the fence, so it is always available when you need it. And it just snaps back in place nice and easy. The miter gauge, and I know there's been a lot of discussion online about this, and it is a pretty okay miter gauge, I guess. The complaints are all about how it doesn't fit super tightly with the work surface and it does have a little give but not too much I don't think it's going to cause any issues with most types of cuts it is made out of metal and it is pretty solid so for a free miter gauge that came with the saw it's not a bad option to use it now that we've taken a look at the setup of the saw and all the features it provides let's just quickly go over some of the basic specifications so this is a handheld table saw so it is pretty portable. It has a nice handle over here to transport it when it's not on the sand and it weighs only about 28 pounds. So it's pretty light and easy to move around. It does support the ability to cut bevels and there's a latch over here which allows the blade to be moved um, to any kind of uh, angle you want. So for mitering this is capable of cutting up to 30 degree angles. And for bevels, it's good from minus two degrees to 47 degrees. The blade on this is eight and a quarter inches. And the max cut depth at zero bevel is two inches and nine sixteenths. And the max cut at a full 45 degree bevel is one and three quarter inches. Now, this is DeWalt's second highest model of table saw in the portable category. And the only thing that this doesn't do that the model up higher does is, well, there's two things it doesn't do. One of which is it can't take a dado blade. For me, it wasn't that big of a deal because most of the stuff I'd use a dado blade for, I will just use a router to do. And the second thing is the actual cut limit. So this one goes up to 24 and a half inches, which is fantastic because that will split a piece of plywood in half. But there is a model higher that has I believe up to 32 inch rip capacity so it can go a little bit further. So that pretty much sums up the specs on this. If you liked this video and found it informative, please like our page or give a thumbs up to this video. And if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, we'll try to get to those and answer them for you within a 24 hour period. So until next time, good luck in your DIY projects and hopefully this review will help you pick out your next table saw.
really good this year, so we get to open up some early Christmas presents from Santa, and we will be doing an unboxing of this DeWalt table saw. Do you remember which model this is, Howie Pants? 440 RS stand that my assistant is showing how it works. You ready? We're top. You want to sit up on top of this? We were both really good this year, so we're gonna get to do this early unboxing of this DeWalt DWE7485 table saw and stand combo. Can we get it, you daddy? Okay. Uh, union break time. What nurse? Mommy? Mommy? Where's mommy? Where'd he go? Get food on her face? Whoa! Okay, it's a trick baby to a stunt baby. Yeah, I know. You're a stunt baby. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 